Uh, first of all, I should start with Bangla because I was in Shanti Niketan, met Dr. Shah at the Vishwarati Central Library. I gifted him two books, one with my, uh, the biography of my father and my mother. My father, who received the first prize by authoring a poetry called Pochise Boisha from uh, our Bishop Kobi, Romindana Tagore. And my dad was so big and was like originally, uh, you know, Pathan. So uh, Tagore asked him whether he was Bengali. So anyway, so I had good connection with uh, in, in my in my heart with Shanti Nikatan and my mother studied there. So I appreciate Dr. Shaha, uh, the librarian at the Vishwabari to, to invite me and I promised him that I would give a talk to many of you about smart learning. <clears throat> Thank you for that. So Bangla Bolchi, after Jara Jara Bangla Bashabashi Atsin, Ami Tadirke, Uzata Chachi, J. Shanti Nikatone, Sate Amar Ekta, Akti Shampoko Atse. They can empower, he puts his Bosha Kogitake, Shoyam, to win her Takurteke, Ruskar Gorn for a stint. Amar Ma, Okanesh, Kanovich children. On a Gunova, Madame de Bangla, Julas Brahma, in the English. Okay, so those of you here, I welcome you to today's session of smart learning. And smart learning is basically, uh, I will, if you can continue with the slide, uh, just move the slide. Okay. First of all, why is smart learning? So I have been thinking that I have done good work in e-learning, but I've been thinking about, do I know what is learning? It's, I have studied so many theories, so many papers, and attended so many conferences. Last couple of years ago, especially, in 2022, I've been thinking, do I exactly know what is learning is all about? See, my background, I am a, I'm a professor at the, at two different universities, George Washington University and University of Texas. I was the founding director of their graduate program, so on, in instructional technology or educational technology. Now, I have a garden in Virginia, United States. The name of the garden is Khan's Garden. So I grow fruits, vegetables, and we have flowers. So one day, I've been thinking about what exactly is learning? Do we really know? Because the new technologies will come and they will be influencing us every single moment. And we will have a lot of education theorists who will give so many different ways to learn, but actually in heart, in my heart, I've been thinking, looks like that I've been learning every single day, but not knowing enough of what is learning all about. Well, so I was in the garden. I was basically, um, can, can you put my uh, uh, video on there, please? So I can also see what I'm saying. But thank you. If you can put my video in there. OK, good. That's good. This is good. So in the slides, I will show you, but I'll be speaking more. So when I was. Um, preparing soil to 
put uh, lau gut, which is like a squash, because I grow good vegetables. I've been thinking, and then next to that a platform, I have apple tree. But one of the apples just fell on the ground. So I've been thinking that what exactly learning is. So to me, I've been thinking maybe learning should be something, whatever we learn, we should really learn it and keep it in our mind, the knowledge for a long time. And I was thinking that the life we are in because of digital innovation is changing, is ever changing. So we have to learn how to adopt this. And then we are something that I was thinking, well, if something interesting, something uh, somehow attracts me, I would like to learn. And I was thinking, well, what I learned, I need to prove to the community that I have learned. Obviously, technology here. So I've been thinking, okay, so the learning should be something that as simple as it is. Remember those days, maybe India or Bangladesh or any other countries, people would get together underneath a tree who learn. I think our Rabindranath Tagore is a nice place in Santinikatan. I would believe that maybe his followers would get together around him to learn from him or any other um, mentor. So in that in mind, I have been thinking about something called a smart, smart. What would be the smart way of learning? So I kind of abbreviated this to, you know, smart. So if you can continue the PowerPoint a little further, uh, just uh, continue the PowerPoint further, please. Go, go, press. Okay. Continue. Okay. One more. Okay. Now this is. So what I'm thinking, today's talk would be this. What is in our heart we truly believe what exactly is learning. And then after that, we'll find out what exactly the students like to learn. That is the characteristics of learning. And then we need to give them guidance how to design this. So first of all, I'll talk about what in our heart we believe, what learning institutes. Then we'll tell the whole world, what are the characteristics of learning environment that learners need? And then we'll give them the guidance. Uh, please continue. So uh, continue further, please. Okay. Now, what is SMART? So I use the word SMART to abbreviate my thinking. S, S for sustainable. Sustainable, learning that sticks. The something that you learn, it stays with you. Because every time you're trying to learn something, if you forget, it doesn't help. But if you remember, if you all of you think about your elementary or primary school to the university life, what you have learned that you can remember, still can use it, it has to be sustainable. In Bangla, textually. The next is M. What M stands for? Like I said, if something does not attract me, I don't want to learn. So in our profession, as a professor, we need to make the learning is motivating, engaging, and it's fun. If we can make it engaging, then it will be motivating. So for M, for SMART, is the motivation. Motivating. The next thing would be A. 
What is A stands for? Adaptable. You see, in this new horizon, new horizon of this world after the COVID, people identify that there are so many ways we can do our business. Now we have e-business, e-commerce, e-education. So to adapt to these new changes, it must have implication on our daily life. So if we cannot adopt ourselves to the situation, then we cannot be actually able to serve our students or learners in appropriate way. The next thing is R. Well, you can make the learning fun, engaging. However, we are blessed with our society. We are blessed with our citizens. Our citizens pay for our education in most countries. So we have to do something which, which are basically result oriented. If I go to medical school, can I serve the nation, serve the citizens, serve the community? That would be the result. If I went to engineering school, can I serve the country? If I bring an anthropologist, I went to school, I went to college, can I really show that what I have learned? So R is for result oriented. You see, now you can say, what else? Well, you have a T. What T stands for is technology enabled. In Bangla, I want to say a few words. There is a very popular uh, newspaper. It's called Prothum Alo. First sight. And in their editorial in 2004, they featured me. And there I said, what I meant, if we cannot accept technology, our nations will lag behind. So that means technology enabled is going to be all the time. Because technology is not for today's. Technology started years 2005 to 10,000. People use the tool, that's the technology. Something that help you teach or learn. So that's the technology. So move on, please. Now, what I just talked to you about is that the smart learning is for sustainable, M for motivating, A for adaptable, R for resident oriented, T for technology enabled. Now, after COVID, Kina so bad globally, we did a search and I did a conference with my colleague and I tried to speak with the students, students from all over the world, from Bangladesh to Norway. And what I find, we ask them, well, you cannot go to school because of COVID, but what kind of learning environment do you want? So they told us, that they want learning environment, which is mostly that I could see that also in the book, I put it there, uh, is called, it's, this is the students are telling us all over the world that they want something interactive. Interactive in Bangla means you know, interactive is the same thing. They want device independent, meaning that the world is changing. When you have a laptop, you can use a laptop. You have a cell phone, you can use a cell phone. If you are in um, classroom, so device independent, meaning that you need to learn how to convey your lessons and lectures to the global audience with the different devices. They want something easily accessible. 
that they don't have to wait. If we're providing lessons, they will be able to easily access. One thing is that they want single objective focus, meaning that if you think of the umbrella, so the goal of umbrella is to protect you from rain or sunshine, but each spoke of the umbrella should be learning objective. So they want, students want, that instead of teaching them all together, but teach one objective at a time, single objective focus. So having said that, I, uh, I feel that, you know, our students always tells us that what is important um, for them to um, learn. And then they talked about uh, these are the students are telling us. And they talked about that short duration. The single objective, you teach them. Short duration. Not for too long. The students don't have that patient anymore. They are on the cell phone. When you ask them or talk to them, they say, test, send me text. That means their um, skill of multitasking is greater. So we have to learn how to make the learning short duration. And they want something um, retention boosting, something they can remember. And they also think that all the things, all the objectives you teach, same look and feel. And it's also part of the whole course. So if you are doing one objective lesson, one time, then make sure that it is a global thing. The whole course should follow the same. Then they want cost effective. So cost effective meaning in here is that it has to be very affordable. All right, so we can move on to, these are the one you can see, you can press it please. So you can see in the video here that uh, how, uh, what the learners need. If you don't, if you don't follow this, then you'll be thinking you're a professor of mechanical engineering, you know all that, you're not worth it to the learners. Learners, this is for the learners, the globally, globally that we did the research, this is what the learners from third world countries and from all over the world are telling us. They want cost effective, they want engaging, they want something device independent, they want something short, they want something in a single objective focus, and they want to make sure what are the lessons you cover in a course, they are consistent so they can follow. This is, I'm not saying this is the, you know, students from almost all over the world, they're telling us. So this is what the learners want. Okay, we can continue, please. So now the question is, okay, I already talked to you about what is learning is all about and what the learners want, but how can we, Give them guidance. So because of this guidance, my framework called e-learning framework, which I have introduced 2001, and that has been used for many dissertations globally, many universities globally are using it. So with this one, I want to take a few minutes to explain how do you give guidance? I'm thinking when I was a professor at the University of Texas, I was thinking that if I wanted to teach a course called in instructional technology, instructional design to my students, and I send them to Amazon Forest, then how would I be able to teach him? This is uh, 96 that I was thinking. So then I put the learners at the center in this model. You see, they would have so many problems. Where is my professor? Where is the library? So all the numerous issues came up. So together, all these issues I put together this framework called 
enhance e-learning framework. In that framework, you know, I have, uh, uh, and this book, I don't know if you can see, but this book came from uh, Bangladesh Prime Minister's office, um, published this book called e-learning, or this model, and this model has been used in already 23 languages that been translated, Chinese, Korean, Arabic, all. However, the whole idea of e-learning is that you put the learner away from you, not with you. But how can you teach them? There'll be questions, like I said, they were talking about the voice library, where I can find the book, where is the internet connection? That's it. So after all these issues, can you teach online? Do you know where your students are? Do you know what kind of technology they have? Do you know the professors or their teachers' technological capability and their capability? Do you know their mental health? What condition they are in? Nowadays, with the cell phone, you can be on the train, you can still listen to a lecture. You see, life has changed. Now we have chat GPT, which is which give you a lot of answers. However, I caution you about chat GPT. If learning objectives are well-defined, you can use artificial intelligence. They can give you guidance. If learning objective that you have is fuzzy, it's not well-defined, it's ill-defined. I think when it comes to psychological, emotional stuff, chat GPT may not be that successful. So I caution all of you in the world, please make sure your learning objective is well-defined. Then use chat GPT, it may help you. But if it's learning is emotional, psychological, chat GPT will not be able to you know, behave like human. All they're doing is looking into all the available databases and put them together, giving you fast. Learning is not like that. Think about the learning that those days, thousands of years ago, how people learn. And thousands of years now, same thing. That's what I keep saying. A smart means that something sustainable, something adaptable, something motivational, something result oriented and technology enabled. Technology was there in different format, technology is here. But learning is the most important thing, it has to be sustainable, motivating, adaptable, result oriented and technology enabled. That is what I'm talking about. And in this framework, the eight dimensional framework, you have pedagogy that deals with learning theory, in instructional theory, Technological dimension deals with software, hardware, infrastructure. The next one you have interface design. Interface design, suppose I was playing cricket in uh, Chittagong College School here. When I did bad, my friends, uh, the, my peers will say like this, I mean, Kaskola. I don't know other culture, but in America, when I went, if you do something good, they would say, uh, you know, thumbs up. Means you did good, well done. So that's a cross-cultural communication. Then you have that evaluation. Now, in the face-to-face -face classes, when we teach, we evaluate our, we assess our students. But in e-learning or blended learning, we have the opportunity to assess the learners also evaluate the instructor and all the support services. Once we get this information together, feedback from people, we can improve our system. Then you have management. In regular classroom, we go, we take our notebook and we start writing on the uh, blackboard. Nowadays they call whiteboard maybe. That was our management of the professor. Now in online, you probably today stop, you want to record it and you want someone to hear what I say, then you can put the link to it. So the management is to distribution of information 
and also managing it. So we, in the library, you can put this all on in a PDF format or any other format. They will have access to the electronic um, documents. So that is professors or teachers teaching these classes. They need to be aware there is a big management issue. This management issue to deal with basically distribution of information online. Then you have something called ethical dimension. This is the biggest of the biggest ethical consideration. For example, you have something to do with, with cross-cultural communication. Anything ethical. You suppose I'm in Bangladesh to the Chittagong, Bangladesh, Calcutta, uh, hosting of this uh, talk. Uh, there uh, only a 30 hour, uh, 30 minutes difference. But think about that. If I'm speaking this time from uh, 11.30 or 12 noon in from Bangladesh, it will be about two in the morning in, in United States now. So what happens, you need to have a sensible uh, thinking that this is ethically it's not right. Because if you do synchronous live, then they will be sleeping, you'll be talking. So that's an ethical issue. It's called geographical diversity. You need to learn that. Then you have a learner diversity. Some learners learn different way, use the different devices. So you need to provide that. Then you have the cheating situation, plagiarism. How do you, how do you but there's something I don't hear. Uh, I hope everybody can hear me. So you see that plagiarism and also copyright issue. So these are all ethical consideration. Those of you are teaching online, make sure you the student actually doing the work that you are evaluating. And also, oh, somebody said clear, not clear voice. Okay. I, I hope uh, you can hear me well, because I'm in a hotel and I'm using my uh, cell phone. So can you hear? It, oh, it's clear, that's good. Thank you so much, thank you. So what happened is this, an ethical issue is so important. We have the political situation. Uh, if someone, a professor wanna write about the Tibetan situation, a professor from India, of Tibet would write in one way, a professor from China would write in a different way. The, see, these are controversial issues. So the ethical consideration would be for you to make the multiple perspective together, to understand that students would like to see the two sides of the coin and they can make a decision. So, and online learning, uh, not clear. Okay, no sir, not clear, maybe. Uh, is it clear now? I'm holding the, okay. So Come on, we need to, yes, okay. So what happens is that we need to focus on whatever we can give it to the students. Because remember my students is in Amazon forest, not close to any civilization. So how do you be able to create, um, create good, online education for them. So that means you need to think about what are the major issues that involve learning. Then comes the institution, institutional dimension. You see, that is Pakistanic in Bangla. Institutional means, for example, you as students have been taking classes with you in uh, academic setting and in from university. Now, all of a sudden, you're teaching that in blended or you're teaching that online. So the question becomes that does your institution provide the same quality of instruction as if they get online from you and also get from face-to-face -face classes? So, so they want to always check is this as good as face to face classes? They always question that that's an institutional issue. How about the certificate they get going through online? Is it as good as if they go into uh, 
brick and mortar physical classroom. So these are the basically the issues that you have to think about from pedagogical, technological, and also you have to think about um, all eight dimensions. So put the learner at the center of this model and keep asking issues from pedagogy to technology to ethical and see whether you're providing right instruction, right learning environment for learners. So that is going to be important. So move on, please. Okay, so move on. Yeah. Okay, so that move on one more time. Okay, so you see what, no, go back, please. Go back, go back, go back. Okay, here, give it here. So what you see, first of all, I give you an idea that what does really learning means? So with my discovery of the thinking, I said it has to be smart. Nowadays, people are calling it smart learning. So this is smart is not like someone in the business development, the specific goal or, no. The smart means sustainable, it has to be motivational, it has to be adaptable to the situation, and it must show the results, return on investment and technology supported. The next thing we said, okay, if we believe in that kind of instruction, that kind of learning, what exactly our learners need? Well, after COVID-19, you see what happened? Globally, I served or survey um, the learners globally and wanted to know what kind of learning environment do you need. They said they want something very cost effective. They want something that they can remember. They can um, uh, they can use any kind of devices. It must be designed in a single objective focus. They don't want something too long. They want something that has uniformity because they are busy, okay, to design such an online learning or blended learning, what would you do? So you need to give them guidance. With my research from 2000, uh, actually 1996, that book came out in 2000. I have several books, but my 97 book with the web is instruction uh, where I uh, continued my research and I found that the guidance would be this, just know your audience, where they are, what kind of system they have. Should they use blended learning or they should use online, but which part of the objective you should do online. For example, a medical student, if they want to learn surgery or operation, it cannot be totally online. It can be blended. So that means a medical student will, for the first half, can see how a surgeon, a doctor, can do the surgery before the class. At Harvard, it calls it flipped classroom. So before the classroom, they can watch the video how the surgery or operation is done. Then they come to the operating table, touch the blood, me, human, talking to them, and they do the surgery. So it is called blended because this in a Bloom's taxonomy, you see low cognitive level, you can do online, but high cognitive in Bangla, we say hate kolome. That means hands on, something you have to do is a skill wise, is intellectual skill or psychometric skill. So that way you have to do the lot of blending. You see? So if someone says, Can you do online for surgery? Yes, somebody you can do, but to learn, medical students to learn, they need to see the patient. They need to talk to the patient. They need to make that patient feel good and they have to test the blood. So they can learn. I had so much surgery in my life. I don't want to go to a surgeon, never went to, uh, never learn a surgery uh, in, a, uh, in a classroom or uh, in the lab or an operating table. So that is the guidance. So for example, I have already, already told you why I believe the smart is in the very, in our heart, important of learning. And I also talk to the learners what they think, how they would like to see the learning environment. 
And then I provide the guidance. These are years of research and my best-selling book, White Business Instruction, came out first of its kind in 1996. And from there, I've been doing a lot of books. And my website is badrulkhan.com. And I just came out with a book, the Smart Shikai Smart Bangladesh Names. Bangladesh has a new initiative called Smart Governance, Smart Citizens, Smart Society, Smart Economy. So for that, I, Badrul Khan, believe citizens have to be smart. And I believe for them to be smart, they have to learn a smart way. And this book will be coming in English in any other uh, countries, I believe, because my books, like uh, the e-learning book came in the 23 languages in the world. So this book, I hope, will be smart learning. I already talked with the Rutles and see if I can do the English. Why I started from Bangladesh? The reason is that I have learned so much from this country and I have, I have been, I've been to India. I was in, uh, uh, I had to Kharagpur many years ago. I get out there. I went to, you know, uh, India, especially um, International Youth and Premier Foundation took me to Bangalore. I give keynote there. I've been to NT, uh, uh, GNTU, Hyderabad, and all different places. Uh, and I hope that learning is something that you don't have to be number one top students in the world, but you need to comprehend. I want to see something that you learn, you can use it at your work. Because taxpayers' money you're using to learn, you need to serve. I want some a human, a citizen should be understanding how to adapt themselves to the new situation. Someone will not take money from ATM, they think ATM machine, probably not, not all right. So they will lined up in the bank to collect money from the bank. So you need to adapt yourself. But other thing you need to do, make the learning very engaging, very motivating. That's why there is a subject called instructional design. That is based on learning theory, learning strategies. So these are, we, I did my PhD in, in instructional systems technology from Indian University. I did my undergraduate in chemistry from there. And I find it very fascinating how people learn. And I was an evaluation specialist and instructional designer for Indian University Medical School. I would advise medical professors, MD, PhDs, how to teach. See, there's a difference between what to teach is curriculum. How to teach is in instruction. How to teach instruction? So my background is in instruction technology. And I hope that I was able to make um, you understand that learning is not very uh, easy. You need to give your heart and soul. You need to be friendly with your students. You need to be interactive with them. And many people will think that we all know that. Well, I hope you do know because the world is changing. The student's behavior is changing. The student's time frame is different. You cannot be sage on the stage, but you have to be guide on the side. You cannot tell the student you do it. No, you do work together, project-based. Well, I have said enough. I am in Chiragong, Bangladesh, my hometown, and I am in a hotel. So if there are technical problems, you are waiting and you couldn't hear sometime, well, I apologize and excuse me. That's the reality. Even at by one of my friends, he was from Harvard, he was joining a conference, his home, internet not working. He went to the neighbor's home. So I am very happy when it happens so I can show that projective technology is not going to be always in your support. Something can go wrong. That's why you need to have alternative way. Today, 
I knew that in this hotel, I will have a problem with presentation. My computer laptop may not work because the uh, internet connectivity. I sent my PowerPoint presentation to Dr. Shah, and this is where you find him, that badrulkhan.com slash smart. badrulkhan.com slash smart. You will find that slides, and it went pretty good in a way that you know I have done the alternative, alternative way of presenting. Thank you so much. I'll be willing to um, take your questions if you have time, uh, but I have time. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you all. We would like to invite our online speakers. If you have any questions, please come up with your questions. You can send your questions in the chat box. All the online participants are requested to send your questions in the chat box so that we can help or, you answer your queries. Or they may raise their voice. You can raise your voice also. By the way, if you recorded this presentation, you can put that in a place and send us a link because many of uh, others uh, from different countries would like to have access to it. So please do send that to <clears throat> yes, sir. Actually, uh, this is our usual practice. And I am very, uh, again, advanced grateful to you. Before obtaining permission, you have already allowed us to upload this lecture video in our library YouTube channel. And soon after uploading it, we will share the link with you so that those who are not able to, to listen this lecture in real life or real time mode, they may listen through the YouTube video so that uh, we need to hang up this video, these valuable talks in the YouTube channel. Thank you very much. I like that. And I will, if you allow me, I will share that with others in the world. Yeah, so kind of you, sir. Thank you. Uh, any question? Yeah, Gar Gargi from our uh, Russian language PhD scholars, she intend to ask a question, you can raise. In your study, yeah. I have seen that in ethical consideration, there was a social and cultural diversity. Can you please elaborate this point, sir? I did not get to that. Yeah, he's not getting. Good afternoon, sir. Um, myself, Karthi here. Just I want to know that in your slide, there was a point, ethical consideration, and there was a uh, there was social and cultural diversity in regards to ethical consideration. Can you please elaborate that point, sir? I did not get it. And other, other issues I have understood, like etiquettes, what are the things we need to know before using social media, like smart learning, how a participant should be, but what are the social and cultural diversity in relation to ethical consideration? Actually, actually, I mean, the sound is not very clear, uh, but uh, if someone can just say a few words, uh, she, is she talking about Cultural diversity or uh, cultural. Uh, yeah, sir. Her question is her question yes. is what about your detailed opinion on cultural and social diversity with respect to ethical aspect? Yeah, very, Eth good. Ethical very good. I heard it. See, ethical consideration, I put that on the framework, is because it deals with the cultural diversity, it deals with learner diversity, geographical diversity, the something deals with, uh, you know, emotional. So, <clears throat> for culturally, see, when you are teaching a course in online, you're thinking you're teaching it to your students, but they are, if you make them available to the world, it is... The whole world is watching. Suppose culturally, in United States, 
when he used the red color, red, for warning. You know, something warning, use red color. But in China, red color is very vibrating. Uh, something just revolutionizing their thinking. So we use it for the danger color, to danger something which is red. <clears throat> so it is very acceptable and uh, encouraging color for China. Same ways, like it's a thumbs up in Bangladesh or part of India, would have been, or Kachala means, you know, you dedicatory, so you did not do well. But in Western culture, that means way to go, you did well. Same ways, you know, when you say something in, in, in Bangla, we sometimes we say that, ek desher gali ar ek desher guli, something like that. Man, meaning that when you say something, uh, it, it may hurt other person culturally. So you need to learn to be very inclusive. So when you're teaching online, don't you think that you're in Shanti Niketan, but you are in the whole world. You are in the world. They will hear you. So when you when we talk, when I talk, I wanted to make sure that you know our audience from all over the world. So they, you need to do a study of sign and symbols of people, how they are, where they're participating from. For example, I'm a, I'm a, uh, I have my social belief, my religious belief. So for example, uh, people uh, in our faith, they don't use pork, you know? So if you show pig, it may not be well accepted among those people. So that has to be culturally uh, acceptable, you know? Because in the classroom, they tell you, but don't do this, I don't like it. No, but online, it's going to be available to other public. So you may have a question, how would I know who, what their background is, how the thing? So that's the thing about online education, e-learning. You have to be open-minded. You have to do research. I did one of my master's student in George Washington University many years ago. I gave him the homework of identifying what is in African culture, what is acceptable, what is not acceptable. So there are something global standard. Maybe someone of you in the library science can do a research on what is globally acceptable for online research and online teaching. So that's what I put on ethical. And, you know, culturally, if you put a music, but some culture may appreciate it, some culture may not like it. So you need to do a research of who are the students, where <laughs> they are. So uh, that's how it is. And it's a very important question. Thank you. Any more question? You have any question? Someone have a question? You too. Good if you can ask question Bangla, I'm I also speak Bangla. Jodi Karagono Pushno Take online participants, I'm a Bangla to Bolte Pari, Garin Bolo. Thank you, sir. Actually, am I audible, sir? Am I audible? Am I audible? Yeah, I can hear you, but the problem is that your sound does not come very clear to me. So it's a little fuzzy. But you say it. Dr. Shah maybe can let her come close to the microphone. Question Kiri K, Una Namki. Gargi Ghos, she's a PhD research scholar of Russian language. Russian. Yeah, you can see. Yeah, very interesting because my book, uh, during COVID, my book in Russian language, you know, if you go to badrukan.com, you'll see my book in Russian. Okay. Go ahead. Now, when you talk, you talk slow and talk. Now, don't be too loud. Talk Thank you, sir. Loud. Thank you, yeah. sir. Actually, I have also written one article when uh, during uh, COVID time uh, for the online learning. What are the advantages for from students' perspective? And I have written, uh, I have presented two papers also on this. So, smart Beautiful. learning 
has been evolved during covid times it was existing it came into use much more during this time but as you said that during this time we learned many means etiquette was there in theoretical ways but in practically we learned while we were using it right sir so what do you think sir there is a gap which was existing before and it has been after covid it has been means decrease sir in respect to users and smart learning before and after very good that's i can hear you well and that's a very good question yes see the behavior changes first of all because i am a very old timer when it comes to e learning so my first best selling book web business extraction came in <clears throat> 1996 so when i was talking to different countries different countries you know speaking people are really challenging me in a way oh can you teach online can you teach through the computer all this after the covid nobody asked me these questions nobody would ask challenge me whether you can use the online method or computers or cell phone to teach so the big jump in behavior so they would listen to me would say oh, what is saying i don't know maybe maybe not but after the covid it hit the world so dangerously children were at home people were working from home telecommuting change working have it changed i know that you want to talk to someone on the phone they don't want to talk but they will do the multitasking say how are you i'm fine or if you want to talk you just call me or text me the behavior has changed because that they become adaptable we remember my smart s for sustainable m for motivating e for adaptable and you have r for result oriented t for technology so adaptable work here because they are adapting it now you don't have to uh tell people what is e learning anymore several years i think 2000 um 20 i was in calcutta uh south college south calcutta uh, girls college mm -hmm. so i was telling them i telling one of the students uh, do you know e learning this is no actually does your pishima or your dadima knows e learning she said no she doesn't know she doesn't know e learning i said does she use mobile phone she said yes i said does she use the mobile phone to teach you something or advise you something so she does i said that is e learning any electronic devices you use for getting instruction or learning that is e learning simple as it is electronic device. so when i did this lot of work for telling people what is e learning nowadays you say online e learning they understand but my interest is to make sure they are not abusing the system they are not wasting the time but they are meaningfully learning and that's why cross cultural communication you need to understand like in santiniketon like say, my mom studied there i was there but i just there for a few couple of days i didn't have much uh, plan but what i see um that there you have um a different feelings to be there listen to the students singing talking these are very precious thing can online actually show them maybe you can try there is artificial intelligence will do you no good unless you can visit so that's why dr shah maybe next time you invite me i probably come to bishwar with you and exactly talk to them but now i am trying my best in a hotel room and telling you about the e learning so culturally i need to think about it that 
what are the things, what would be the best way to communicate with you, convey my message to you. And that's one thing. Some culture, they use a lot of hands just <coughs> Some cultures don't. So once you know all the things and this framework is not you to guide you how to design. Rather, it gives you the warnings. Have you done that? Do, are you sensible? Is your classroom inclusive for people who learn not diversity? All this question, the book has, you see, this is Bangla, it could be in English. It's all these are questions in the book, you know, table. So it's like a practical way to bring answers oh. to issues. So make sure you have a lot of issues. That's normal. Thank you. Salat. Is think there I... any more questions from online or offline participants? So we can invite our university librarian, Dr. Nimai Chansaha, for the concluding remarks. Sir, please. <clears throat> uh, okay. So the, actually, I am not in a position or I do not suppose myself that I have capacity to make any comments on <clears throat> presentation or speech delivered by one of the iconic figure in international level on e-learning and educational instructional technology like Professor Khan said is. But I am really motivating. I don't know how far I am able to make myself a smart commodity for this smart society to cater smart learning resources and smart making smart environment. But with this little bit of, I can say one hour lecture, I am just enchanting and getting much encouragement in this e-learning environment. And apparently I have learned that this e-learning concept is basically for first world country. Those who are having some sort of high-end infrastructure in terms of information and communication technology. But today I assumed and guessed and felt also that this is basically a game of mindset and attitude. Yes, as at the very starting, we have experience that technology has two sides. Nothing in this globe, I think Sarah will be agreed with me, that nothing in the globe is critic free or shortcomings free. Like a coin, everything has two sides, bad and good. That is why technology has also some threats and some signing. So we have to adapt the signage of the technology. And of course, when this kind of threats will come, we have to find out the alternatives to address my target. Like said yesterday sent me, by guessing this kind of techno threats, he sent me the PowerPoint presentation to me. Audience couldn't get any problem that who and where this PowerPoint presentation has been served. So likewise, we have to find out the solution to address the instant problem. And I do believe that no problem in the country or in the world does not having any solution. So the moment we are having any problem, that problem must have its solution. So we being the, the responsible citizen of this e-learning environment, rather say current educational industry, it's our duty, it's our commitment, it's our quality to find out the solution for a particular problem to cater the education. And one more thing in the search model, what I found that blended mode. Apparently by blended mode, most of the academician thought that blended mode is a combination of offline and online kind of thing. Like today's presentation, 40 candidates are joining through virtual or remote access, remote location, and some 10 candidates with me over here as physical participants. So I can say this is a blended mode presentation or session. 
but this is not the complete conception or definition of blended mode of presentation. Blended mode means those who are not able to either physically or online witness this real-time lecture. Before the Library Network has devised its YouTube channel and we will upload this lecture to cater to the global level citizen throughout their available time. So that is actually the extended blended mode of any session, any learning like that, which is the extended also part of e-learning environment. And Sarah's different framework, innovation, best practices for a particular level, like school level, like undergraduate level, like postgraduate level, like research level, based on the audience requirements, he has his supply in through the framework on how to adapt, best adapt this e-learning with respect to different countries. And he has many publications, many paths, many this kind of brochure, which is very life-saving and which is very self explanatory I request all the participants, physical mode, online mode, within Vishwabharati, outside Vishwabharati, that please browse the website badrulkhan.com smart slash and you will get many inputs of your curiosity on e-learning and please encourage, enrich the e-learning environment to sustain our educational industry and build up a good nation, good globe. With these few words, from core of my heart, I wanted to extend my deep regards and request, sir, to extend your future expertise, support, cooperation, collaboration, coordination, extension with Vishwabharati Library Network in particular and India in general to, to sustain and to accelerate this e-culture for the building of a good e-nation. And before handing over the uh, floor to my colleague, Dr. Sabat Mausin, who is supposed to offer customary word of thanks to conclude the session. But I am very conscious who is cooking, he will not get the good item of the food. Means who is supposed to offer word of thanks for all of us, she or he will not get the word of thanks. So before handing over the mouthpiece to my colleague, Dr. Sabat Mausin, let me extend my heartfelt gratitude and thanks to Dr. Sabat Mausin and my colleague, Dr. Kausik Ghosh, who are carrying pain to join the coordinate this four day session. So thanks both of you. Now it's time to you to offer word of thanks. Sabat, please. Thank you, sir, for giving this opportunity to me and beautiful, enlightened, concluding remarks. We are. Uh, we would like to thank our guest speaker, Professor Badrul Huda Khan, for such a thought-provoking lecture. We are grateful for such an international, renowned, motivational speaker on our Vishwabharati Library Network platform. His academic excellence and effortless striving for community is praiseworthy. And all the latest concepts like crypto, cryptocurrency, artificial intelligence, implementation of e-learning is so magnetic that we are eager to go through his book. We are fortunate enough to have such an illuminated speaker with us. And those who have missed this lecture, they can uh, watch this lecture, recorded lecture on Vishwabharati Library Network YouTube channel. We are uh, thankful to all the national and international online and offline participants, both faculties, research scholars, students, professionals, to spare your valuable times towards uh, knowledge enhancement. We are grateful and thankful to our university librarian to organize such a bright and innovative program for knowledge enhancement for the masses and classes, for the awareness of the academic community from time to time. And we would like to uh, thank him on behalf of audience also to, uh, to choose such a motivational speaker from the galaxy of stars. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good.
Okay, sir. So if you allow, then uh, we can conclude the online meeting and with your permission by tomorrow, we will upload this video on the YouTube channel and share the link through you, uh, through WhatsApp to you. And sir, please extend your blessings and your future endeavor for our next journey. Thank you very much, sir. And good Ashur, afternoon. Ashur, I, I do appreciate each and every one of you to participate in these discussions. So a lot of stuff I could not talk and because of the context, not enough time. So those of you are still interested in smart learning, e-learning, blended learning. So do visit badrulkhan.com slash S-M-A-R-T. Badrulkhan.com smart. You'll get a lot of free stuff. Thank you so much. Shabai bhalo thakben. Shustur thakben. Bhalo thakben. korben. Bhalo chinta korben. Onik dhunnavar. Hello, Dr. Benson. Hello, Dr. Benson. Good afternoon. Okay.